Right. So what a beautiful circle we make are making today. And welcome to the first gathering of the Hoop of Elders, of evolving elders. Let's not forget that. Evolving elders here. <clears throat> And so, um, yeah, we're going to start the new year. We were having just a, a few minute um, connecting in and dialoguing and just really sharing, having that sense of coming together in communion and family um, with the intention today of really counting our blessings. What is it that we're bringing here? And um, this sense of fulfillment, you know, what's moving in you around that in regards to being an essential elder, to forgiving the unforgivable, to um, a sense of, 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 com of a communion, you know, yes, the global communion, but here I, I'm always, this is what's being, I'm being reminded of lately is um, when you boil water, if you have an electric stove, this is what's, <laughs> when you have an electric stove, watch it sometime. What it does, if you're boiling water, it boils water from the inside out. So all the energy is going out. But when you boil water or you're on a fire from a fire or a gas stove, it always boils and moves the energy to the center. <laughs> and, and that in itself is an invocation and real a beautiful metaphor for our lives because we're constantly needing to be renewed, revivified, revitalized in order to then be part of that living toroidal field, right? That living field that then begins from our heart center of our heart begin to emanate out. So hold that in whatever that's moving in you. And, and we always come together here to with uh, a heart resonance. Talk a little bit about that when we open, after we open and um, a sense of really deepening into the living waters. And that's all I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna pass it to um, Elda, <laughs> Elda, Elder Ia Tahira to open this call. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And bringing your energy in this one, gathering your energy, gathering yourself here in this imaginary world. Isn't it beautiful? that uh, you get to play in this imaginary world is bigger than when you were children. And all of us had that imaginary world when we were children. And we could see far, far. We spin and we spin. And I'm inviting each one of us to see if we can step into that imaginary world and just play, go out there and play in it and see how it speaks to you as you come into this circle. And imagine in this imaginary world that you're spinning and you weave in a hoop of this hoop of elders, but they, they widen. How far are they in the world around you? And where are they in this central evolving circle of elders and families on this planet, because you are a circle of a family, a unique family, and a unique community that is being invited to hold a vital part of this new dream, this evolving group of elders, this evolving earth even. And in your spin and see if you can see all of that, how it's fitting into your central place, into your heart, into your central womb. Take a deep breath into those spaces and see if you can pull that energy into that space. And imagine that you are pulling it in 
And you might want to take your hands and pull them as if you're in a prayer and just breathe down through those centers and feel that connection. And as you breathe in, into that center and feeling that connection, allow your hands to move outward and just widen that circle and see if you can push that energy out of all around that outer circle. And imagine that it's touching all of those places that you are right now, wherever you are in your space of spinning and dancing in the world. And just stop there and bring it in on another breath and breathe that in and raise your hands into the heavens and give some thanks to that which is above you and be in some gratitude for these connected spaces and bring it back down into that center place, your prayer, and maybe bow to it and give it some gratitude. And while you're there, you want to gratitude to the divine that sits above us and that which sits below us. And now we take our hands and so it be, and we bring that energy all around us. And we know that that is our protected bubbles. When we walk, up, walk out into the world, that is our protected butter, bubble. And we are connected. We are in the universe and the universe lives in us and through us. And we are all in the universe and one universe. And so it be. I shame. So when you're done with this, bring your little bodies back down to earth and sit in your chair and open your eyes and you are here now. Mm -hmm. You need to unmute. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Gail. And I just want to speak to um, the circle, just a, just a small amount, and and then pass it over to Daniel, Alda, and June to just bring in their voices, and and then we'll open it to the circle. So um, I know I'm in an incredible circle. There are beautiful talking circles that have the specificity of um, speaking equally and um, one after the other and going around the circle. And the invitation here is that this circle is slightly different and that we invite us all to, as I was sharing in the beginning, just to begin to focus on the center, what's emerging and to trust that when something's moving in you, to be able to step forward and, and, and come into the circle and, and share. And this is a small group today, so two or three minutes is fine. Um, and then to allow that field to inform each one of us. And, and with that comes the building of, uh, of coherence and we begin to notice that there's a thread, I like to say a golden thread being woven an emergent understanding. Um, so it's a little bit different, and we invite you to be willing to um, experience that. And that what that does is that invites uh, people who are always up front talking first to sit back a little in their bodies. And then for those who, you know, might be a little more shy or wait to the end um, to come forward. So you just feel that in your own body, and we're really trusting this, um, the sense of breathing with creation and allowing that to come forth. So with that, just keeping it short and want to invite um, Daniel and we and we always start with a, a heart resonance or a centering and thank you, Elda, grandmother Ia, um, Tahira for opening our circle this morning. So yeah, I'm complete. And you can just end with passing a feather. This morning, I this is a, called the harmonizer and it's a beautiful tool uh, 
that influences the environment. So here we are. <laughs> um, oh, I'm the harmonizer. <laughs> Good smile. Good way to emerge the day with a good smile, heart sharing. <clears throat> I'll just take a moment uh, and before we get to go through our first round, maybe if that's the case. But I'm in, uh, I'm in the, you know, rather than a golden thread, uh, I see the rainbow color thread. Uh, and it's part of my journey uh, as of late. I've been sitting with many nations, people, um, <clears throat> not just people from this continent, uh, but people from all over the world who are struggling uh, in their own lives and looking for the wisdom of the elders, as they say. But uh, in my own personal journey, uh, I've been in the bear medicine. Uh, and that's, I believe it's just right now, night before last, in the morning, early morning, um, I was with family and stepping out into a space with another young man younger man that I could tell, I couldn't remember who he was. We we stepped out to kind of make sure that the perimeter around our family was was secure, with protection. And in doing so, um, I turned into a great big bear in my dream. It's like a third time over a period of years where I have become actually bear or walked as with bear. So at the end reflection of hibernation at this time where bear is sleeping in our culture, uh, is uh, probably being spoken to me in, a, in that way of really delving deep into my inner reflection time about the upcoming uh, seasons and what they bring. There's many things going on in the in Indian country, as they say. We have sweat lodge on Saturday for the men. Um, we have <clears throat> peace and dignity journey this year, uh, a hemispheric prayer run, and a lot of ceremonies. So. Um, I'm ready for the Rainbow Nation. So I'll, I'll leave you with this kind of humorous. I was with a Hopi man yesterday, um, and uh, able to, I was able to take him to the market to get a few things that he needed. Um, and uh, he came out with a basket full of stuff. And he was stocked up good. I was going to take taking him home. And on the way home, he says, <clears throat> he says since he's from Hopi, uh, Second Mesa, he says, when we come, when our people come to Walmart, we, we, we always just say, I'm going to Gathering of Nations. <laughs> Walmart is known as Gathering of Nations to the Hopi people, <laughs> so you know. So it's really something that's, um, it's humorous, but at the same time, there's a real truth to it, of course, uh, in that sense. So being able to see, you know, into the perspective of that, Many people come from all over, and that's also a reason why the medicine will was given to me in a dream as well, to that, to that beautiful walk that I'm, I surrendered to, in the hall to be here, a home takiasin. Thank you, Alamishir. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. Just want to share what's been just placed in our basket today. What is the wisdom of the elders and in what way does this guide or inform us of our way forward? Hmm. And forgive me, uh, in my introduction, you know, it's just very informal, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, this is family for me. Um, I am Choctaw, Muskogee, Yamasee, and Mayan people. And we are here on the ancestral lands of the Yavapai Apache Nation on the sacred waters of uh, the Verde River and Mingus Mountain. No. Oh. Honestly, there's nothing coming up. I'm not feeling called to sh share anything. <laughs> I have nothing to put into the basket in this moment. So um, I, when it pops up later, I'll share. Maybe knowing when to be silent is a part of elders' wisdom. <laughs> uh, 
I'm June and new to a lot of you. I just want to say hello and it's wonderful to be here with you. Um, and I'm, I'm following what Daniel was saying about family because <clears throat> what I'm grateful for and what I hope to bring to the to my world and the world of all those around me is the treasures of family and the passing of of our wisdom and our love generation to generation. And uh, I've just been so blessed recently to have more great grandchildren added to my family. And it's it. Uh, last night I was preparing a book for one of them and I, I discovered that you can buy a book and then in the book you can record your message. You read the story in your voice to the child so that even if you don't see them very often, um, they know you through your voice and through the words that the story tells. And it was it was such a deep and, and actually exhilarating feeling to to be able to use my voice to connect to this new little baby and um, to know that even if I don't see this child very often, my voice and what I carry travels through not only the words that I speak, but through the energy that I can imbue to that, um, to those words and to the book. And it's, it just gave me a joy of finding a new way to connect because for me, family and passing down generation to generation is so powerful and so needed and the healing and the forgiving that comes forward when we're able to do that is is powerful. And so um, I'm going to see that new little grandchild later today. And uh, I'm really stoked. <laughs> I'm very happy and very pleased. And I'm finished. Thank you. Um, hearing uh, June talk about recording a book, I, I suddenly got very excited uh, because it reminded me of, or it put me in mind of all of the wonderful things that technology does bring to us because not that many generations ago, you couldn't record a voice or an image um, or it wasn't easy to record a voice or an image of, of um, someone. And I would truly love to have had a recording of my mother's voice because I don't remember what that sounds like. And I remember so much and even that the feel of her cheek, but I can't remember what her voice sounds like. And there was a time when we, we passed on family stories without that. You could still hear what your grandmother had to say. You just didn't get to hear it in her voice. Mm -hmm. And you knew what your great grandfather um, thought was most important about family, but you didn't get to hear it in his voice. And that's part of what being an elder is, is making sure that that those values get passed on along too in families. Mm. It, it's for me, it's part of the character of a family. And there was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was something that I did that people thought was slightly odd that I did in a, in a little weird way that was just a little different than the way most people did it. And um, I went home after uh, being in California for a few years, I went home to Massachusetts and I was hanging out with family and one of my cousins did whatever it was. And I said, hey, you do it that way too. And they looked at me like, well, of course, how else would you do it? Because that was the way my family did it. But I didn't understand that it was a family thing. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it was just that, it was, I, as I said, I can't remember what it was. It was just that my family did it a little differently and I did it that way without any awareness of where it came from or that it was different than the way other people did it. But what made me really embrace it was when I found out that it was a family thing. That was just the way we did it. Kuligia Kweskwe, Dancing Heron, Dances with Death, Call Me Gail. In Mayumi Ganaita, the river basin on her sacred mountain, Adagul, in my ancestral 
Salagi homelands on her sacred mountain named that means helping many people. And we are the people who resisted both the removal on the Trail of Tears and the reservation that the federal government calls Cherokee. And resistance is empowerment. And so I, I want to encourage my ancestors to join us in that empowerment, in this hope with elders that also is empowerment. And I've recently agreed to be director of Union of Nations and um, represent Grandmothers of the New Earth this coming Sunday on our Sacred Sundays. We're lighting a fire to begin purification on these Sacred Sundays. And the, the Union of Nations is an effort to return us to the original teachings. And the, the emphasis is on coming together, union. The emphasis is on the union. And we're looking at it in terms of the um, Anasazi people, the Hopi that were mentioned earlier, were the first to come from the stars in this wave of humans where we all share ancestry. And my grandmothers go back to an ancient village that the archaeologists have, have verified that we stayed very close to. We've not been more than 70 miles from our ancestral village and the spirits of our land on this sacred mountain and all of those generations in this wave of humans. So that that's the difference that they were able to teach me, even though it was illegal to share our ways and our teachings when I was, well, all the way through college, it was illegal until the Religious Freedoms Act. And I really want to encourage all of you to join that. You know, the Anasazi carry a little different medicine because they're in a different place. They're in the plains. We are the paleo people, the woodlands people is, is my preference. And um, I think Choctaw is woodlands too, but I would defer to those who are, are of that nation to represent themselves in this way and join us in um, launching this union of nations based on coming from the stars, teachings that we brought, which are the spiritual teachings long before religion showed up and and long before colonizer effects. So that's why I want to reach back to Paleo and Ansatsi and original teachings. And I don't know, you can look at DNA and, and we all go back to Neanderthal and Dennis Sullivan. And, and I don't know about DNA. You know, they're trying to eliminate the red race. So I don't like that about DNA. And, you know, I don't like Jim Crow laws still being on the books. I don't know how Ia feel, feels about that, but Blood Quantum and Jim Crow are not helping us unite. So I'd like for us as elders to take our place in returning to these original teachers' teachings and sharing them and uniting nations. So, so please join us in the fire. On Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, um, I'm happy to put the link in the chat or wherever, wherever it's available. It's the gathering room that Shonda Clausen provides for us. And um, I will just be sharing the fire and opening the floor in the same beautiful way for the first hour. And then uh, Michael Demartini is going to take us to Sacramento to some kind of fair that's going on there. And, and several people will present throughout the day. I, I'm trying to limit my Zoom time to an hour, so I, I won't be able to stay much longer than that here. And I'll only be an hour on Sunday, and, and most of my sharing will be just for an hour. We're going to dance next Tuesday for an hour. I have music compositions that I create, and uh, we've been dancing for the winged ones, so we're dancing with the dragonflies next Tuesday at 4.30 on my Zoom, which again, I'm happy to provide a link, and you're all very welcome to join in any of these um, gatherings. 
this is what we we need to do i feel like we really need to emerge as coming together as elders and gathering and and coming into action you know the dancing action the fire action the getting out of our heads in this converse english language that we're forced into and going back to our ancient verb-based languages that my people carry and doing the verb-based actions that we are so capable of and so happy to be able to share together. So thank you all for, for gathering in this way and for joining in, in many gatherings. I'm complete. I notice I am resonating with some things Gail said, some things Alda said, um, kind of coming together and thinking, you know, many of us, um, I'm not talking about just a circle, but the greater circles maybe don't know our particular ancestors or didn't get to meet our grandmother or, you know, but that it is within us, in the DNA, maybe in our hearts. And that really this going in, um, I've, I have found many, many enlightenment so have come to me that really, you know, I, I couldn't have known another way. And then I, I had the chance to check it out and realize, yeah, like you, you doing that particular thing in a particular way and not even realizing it. Um, and I find that so beautiful and magical. And um, at the same time, you know, when you said that about the DNA, I went, oh, I recently saw something um, online about the manipulation of DNA that's starting to proliferate in a really crazy way. Uh, and I go, what, what do we do? Gail, I hear you. It's like we gather in our circles and we pray and we meditate, but where do we need to resist? Where do we need to step forward and say, no, we cannot do these things against life. And there's several places I've been tracking where I'm just shocked and go, how, how can we, you know, stand in our power and say no to the things that are anti-life? And at the same time, you know, I say, oh, part of the elders is staying in this beautiful, still place in the midst of chaos and um, being able to stay in our in that protected bubble of stillness and and to speak from that place. So I, I, I'm trying to feel how those two go together, the action in the world. I just, I had a thing happen over the holidays. Two women friends of mine from California came to visit and stay for five days. And they're both a little older than me and they've both known each other for way longer than I've known either of them. And while they were with me, they got into a huge reaction with each other. Like they, <laughs> they triggered each other. And all of a sudden in my home with these two women really kind of losing their connection to their eldership and, and going into, and I was like, wow. And I'm just so grateful that I had whatever I thought I stayed quiet. I stayed in my heart and, um, and didn't get involved in the reactivity, but was able to, you know, sort of mediate and give them some guidance. And, and I was, I was so grateful because I love both these women and I was sort of shocked to see them, you know, uh, go into very childlike places of reactivity. And I thought, well, that's just a very small example of like as elders, how do we do that in the bigger world when chaos is happening and conflict and, mm -hmm. and, you know, so maybe I'm answering myself as I say that if we can speak out and act out from that place, um, 
that's a different kind of resistance, I guess, or speaking up and taking action. And uh, yeah, I just constantly pray for more of that capacity to stay in that place and not get drawn into, um, yeah, the lack of clarity and chaos that, that was happening for my two friends. So I'm not thinking that I'm, I'm complete. <laughs> I'm going to pick up the rainbow thread on following that. Um, and thank you uh, for sharing. I, so I'm Shelly Darling, and I'm here in um, the Mijuang Long people. Uh, I can't say it, Mijung Bal people uh, on the land of uh, in Malambimbi and uh, in the unceded territory, the larger. Uh, nation is the Bundjalung. And right now, what I understand is that I'm um, in the Brunswick River watershed. Um, I think there's more to learn about that, but I'm in Australia. And um, thank you for your patience and in, in also in terms of uh, there's a lot of, there was a lot of chaos or confusion around what day we were meeting because um, also my computer put on in January 19th, because that's what day it is here. <laughs> I mean, the 18th here. Oh, sorry, the 19th here and the 18th. <laughs> like, so like, anyway, so, um, but the thread I, I'm feeling to pull on because, um, and I'm touching my heart to this Ponamu, which is the green stone from New Zealand. And it's, as you can see, it's kind of a big heart and it's uh, being in New Z in Australia and connecting with New Zealand and and the stone is called the stone of peace. It's the stone of um, it's also called the God stone. And it's my understanding that there was a peaceful nation that arrived in uh, New Zealand thousands and thousands of years ago um, prior to the date that is known as the beginning of history there. Um, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because I feel like, you know, now I'm understanding more of why what was coming in was about the water and um, if you want a second, the water and, and how when, when it's on a natural fire, the water boils inward. And I feel like for me, the messaging really is this, how do we stay with our, that living heart song? How do we, how do we speak from essence? How do we know? you know, just like the river, how do we know um, we follow that inner river so that when we're around those and those situations and, and I'm the reason I felt like, oh, okay, I get it. It's because I, this coming to Australia has been an incredible challenge. Never like the times I've come before. And a lot of, uh, I would just call it uh, unrest in terms of energies and friendships and, you know, it's, it's just, and it's called for this deeper teaching, this deeper wisdom of how to um, breathe myself open. How do we as elders, you know, breathe ourselves open so we can hold um, a greater uh, space, like what was being shared, you know, how do we, we're building that capacity together. So as we're breathing together, we're building capacity to be able to hold more and more and more and more and more. And, and how do we, in the invitation to me as an, as an elder is to invite others to come to center. You know, how do we come out of our opinions and our belief systems and what we think and our blaming, you know, and our shaming. I mean, it's so interesting to me because as an elder, I'm, it's it's like that that screen becomes wider and wider, and and sometimes people can't do that. They don't have the capacity, or they they're in a particular growth sequencing that doesn't enable them to do that. So how do we be that? And I feel like that's really been what's been gifted 
in the in the res, in in the resisted energy of showing up of you know I, I remember years ago uh this whole thing about tolerating you know toleration what are you tolerating and I never got it I was just like what like you know because if you're tolerating then you're you're not coming into yourself I think it's an invitation to come in deeper and go wow and I think that's where for me, forgiving the unforgivable comes in so deeply because where does that happen first? It happens within me. I'm not here to forgive the other person. I'm here to forgive that aspect of me that that where I'm holding in places where I'm holding that. And I feel like that's been probably, well, that's what really brought the hoop of, originally the hoop of elders together. And then we realized, no, we're the hoop of evolving elders. You know, that we're willing to come to that center and meet ourselves, you know, and that means sometimes I need to sit back more. And I'm, and I'm really, it, this is a practice, right? I'm learning how to sit back more, you know, in myself. And, you know, if that energy is dissonant, because as a, as a dowser, that happens quite a bit. Not usually am I in the person's house when it's happening, but essentially that, and I'll end with this, that always... I'm reminded that we used to call it the cauldron of chaos, but that, but that energy is always it, the innate energy of the field. Number one is to unify. And number two is it's always evolving into its highest potential. So I really feel like that's what, that's what brings me joy here because I know that's who I'm sitting with in this circle, you know, and we're willing to do that. So thank you. And I put the, uh, harmonizer in the center and yeah let's play thank you for being here we'll pick up now um i am claudia valdez i'm coming to you from ontario canada i am on the uh, land here of the erie the neutral the Haudenosaunee, on the one night shinabi uh, shinabi um I'm I'm kind of on the outskirts of this of the Six Nations, Great Lake Ontario, uh, right here, and um, I love I love waiting for that pulse to take over, and to be able to speak, and I think that's part of eldership for me, in regards to actions and speaking out there as well. So not just waiting for the pulse in here, waiting for the pulse out there. When do I speak? And I've been thinking about what you're saying, Shelley, about the waters, the boiling from the out in and the in out. I love that. Um, right now, as I was sitting with that, I thought, okay, if I'm receiving, say, heat from the outside and I'm boiling from the outside in, those are the times that I've been watching that I'm sitting more in my center. If it's coming from the outside, sit with that. How do I feel? How do I think? How do I lock on that before I do? And then the stuff that feels like it's bubbling from the inside out, I sit with that and I realize that that's not something I'm analyzing this way. It's something I'm analyzing. I'm needing to vocalize or put out to people. So how do I do that in the best way possible? So I, I saw that from, again, the different sides of, is it rising from me? from my ancestors, from my higher self, from the guides, the spirits that, you know, work through me? Or is it something that's coming into me that I need to analyze and process? And I think that the actions are really um, wise and it's a gentler way, I think, of putting things out there. Um, we were talking about water and something was mentioned in uh, the woman's circle last night that I was in. For instance, just the pollutants that we're using, you know, and when people will put, you know, sunscreen on or bug spray on or take the shampoos and the soaps down to the water. The property where, we, where we're at, there's a lake um, just down the street from us where I send everybody to bathe and to clean up after a really hot day. And I've always got the homemade natural soap and shampoo there. And I always ask, you know, what they're using 
or if they would like to take the bottle that I have for everyone to use, not just mine, it's, it's a community bottle. And by putting it out that way, instead of like, oh, you shouldn't this, you shouldn't that, this is better, that's better, you know, that sort of stuff. I'm just kind of showing what we use and why I use those products compared to the other. Um, and then I make it available for everyone. You know, I, I talk about my waterway and how I try to keep it clean. You know, and if you're using the waterway when you go to bathe, if you don't have anything natural, here you go. I do. And then I let them kind of decide what they're going to do in their own space, in their own waterways, but at least I've planted those seeds. Um, and to me, that's eldership. It's not necessarily telling and forcing, but it really is planting the seeds so that other people can grab onto them and analyze them and decipher them for themselves. Um, I think that those are somewhat the best lessons I've learned or the easiest lessons I've learned when they weren't being shoved or forced on me. But I could actually follow the thread and analyze it for myself and make it my own. So that's what I've got to share, and I will put the feather back in. Thank you for this lovely gathering. Blessings and gratitude to you all. I'm coming in from the southwestern part of Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains, a place of the Monacan people, a place that I now call home. I call it home because I feel rooted here. Whereas prior to coming here, I would move from place to place to place. And my ancestors had moved from place to place to place. And where I'm living now, there is a tall tulip tree, also known as yellow poplar. And when I arrived here, I like to sit beneath that tree and just find a sense of being with that tree of growing my own roots here. And I think about so many people who I encounter who seem rootless, who are seeking authenticity, who are seeking, in one sense, self-confidence because they've been taught so many different things. And so I'm in the process of looking deeper within, looking back into my heritage, finding how deep these roots can grow. And so I see part of our role as evolving elders is to help others establish their connection to their place. Be it a place they are permanently or a place they are just here temporarily, but they can they recognize that this is a place where they are for which they can call home and accept responsibility that comes from being welcome to this place. A phrase I heard recently that I don't know that I will quote exactly, and I don't remember its exact source, was something to the effect There is mystery, there is magic, there is wonder everywhere. And it is up to us to let that presence be known.
in this place I call home. There are several of the wingeds who come to visit every day. And I take great joy in seeing them. And watching them as they live their lives. And noticing even on these most cold days, when temperatures are well below freezing, they find a way to live their lives in peace, gratitude, and joy. Thank you. Just want to welcome Kate, who's here with us, who came late. Um, so welcome, Kate. Feel free to pop in anytime. And also, I wanted to say something that I didn't share in the beginning, which was in this type of circle, you can speak more than once. And just we're still in that emergent place. So whenever you feel that ping, um, you know, we, we invite a pause in between people so that that sensibility can come from the field itself. So um, with that, I put the feather and the harmonizer in the center and yeah. Greetings. It's hard to speak the words to say the comfort in how much I've missed you all. And so very glad to be here today. Um, I, my heart goes out to anyone suffering in all of this cold and, and you know, some are really, really suffering. But for me, I just have to speak to the pure joy and bliss um, that I have been immersed in for the last three days. Um, all the memories of childhood and, and just just how, how invigorating, how life-giving, how I've had to go outside more since it's been so cold because, well, I have to fill it, feed the fill the feeders like five times a day and um and the dog just is so happy and and I, I'm in this kind of this place of not feeling the pain of the world I'm not feeling um I'm not feeling it and and yet I'm aware of it, I'm completely aware of it. And feeling so very, very thankful and, and then guilty and then ashamed and, and then confused. Like, you know, am I really touching my heart if I can't feel this more deeply? Am I really um, opening up to it? But I can't keep it in. I can't keep the bliss down. <laughs> and um, and and it is just so so absolutely wonderful and beautiful and thankful to be here with you. And puppy, you're driving me nuts. I want to pick up the magic wand behind Kate. Thank you, Kate. Um, it reminded me you you you, and it reminded me of the affirmation. I think it was yesterday. I am existence. I am consciousness. I am bliss. I am existence. I am consciousness. I am bliss. And one of the things I I'm just sort of picking that thread and sort of. Ravishing in it, and so much been said here 
and so many threads to pick up on. And I could write a whole dissertation on all the threads that came for. Not that I'm the most esteemed, but to me, that elder that speaks so deep comes out of the voices of my great grandmothers and the seeds that they planted. And what's so um, magical and influenced me is that I'm just now going back to see how they, those seeds that they gave me, that now they sprouted into these beautiful plants and of wisdom. Because at the time they just felt like little sands and my great grandmother used to say he sees in a few nose when the confusion would come and the chaos come. Because in order to wave our way through something, we must first be able to see our way through it in that sense of evolution and consciousness. And that everything that we experience in our life offers us some form of growth and wisdom. And what I'm realizing that a lot of times for us is, I was speaking to a young person the other night, like we are afraid of suffering and in the suffering is this wonderful gift of life and wisdom in itself. We talk about it, we wanna get rid of it, we wanna fix things. And what it led me into that intentionality of embodying life and embodying where I've been on the planet and being able to understand where, where, what does it allow me to do differently? I could say stuck in my victimized, shame-based stuff, but I can also look at asking the other question. You know, what have I learned from all of that journey, whether I'm going back to history and looking at all the places that we've been as a humanity, I could say, oh, look how horrible they did it. I could say, oh, look how horrible we were. I either I could say, my God, we did some damage to ourselves coming through that, that part of life. And what my elder used to call that old dispensation Oh, what did we learn? Oh my God, we did, we beat up bad on somebody. So my thing, when I answer that question of, for me, what it is to be an elder is to be able to interpret the time that I'm in and be able to discern what needs to come forth. Whether I'm dealing with my own stuff, embodying that in a way that it gives me some wisdom, some lessons to look at things differently and being able to face my, that self, that being, and not judge that being or be shame of that being, but to invite it to the table and have a conversation with it. And so I, what I've been doing is inviting my elders here in St. Croix, and I didn't say I'm in St. Croix, for those who don't know, St. Croix Virgin Island, in the land of the Arawak and the Taino people. And if we know anything, all of these lands on this side of the ocean were the indigenous native people, no matter what their names were, they was all the, the um, red people, the keepers of the earth, the land people, the water people. And they knew what their role was. They knew that they were the keepers of the earth. They knew that they were stewards, they knew that they was tending the water. And each one of us had an assignment. So my thing is finding that assignment in a collective way and looking at how we can feed that into the field. And somebody asked a question about what do we do? I, for me, what comes home is like, once we, once we shift our consciousness and evolve ourselves and become the enlightened beings become that awake being. To me, it feels that's what the earth is calling for now. It's calling for another radical, uh, we might call it a radical shift or war, but that's, it's like that energetic field that we feed in. Well, once we get feed this inner body, 
that that energetic field automatically take care of itself. And that this is what I feel that me as an old elder has learned to, when I go back through history, I look at what we done and how we did it. Now, how can we come this collected body? Because we have the opportunity and the capacity to do it. Because we have all the tools. This platform we send in is just a tool. And we can misuse it, we can make it work for us, or we can make it become obstruction to us. So I'm grateful that to reach across the world and connect to all of these bodies in a sacred circle, because we call it, we create that sacredness of it by sharing our gifts and our heartfelt stories of evolution. That's what I feel. That's just my story, you know. That's my one piece. What do I bring to the who? Not as a white person, not as a black person, but what do I bring as a human part of the human family? What do I bring? What do I do different on this planet? Does it, I just come with more questions as a dreamer, as a visionary always have more questions for us. So also I sit with the Atlantic Ocean. To me, it provided a way for all of us if we sit in that ocean and look at how we travel through it. To me, it's such a powerful, miraculous witnessing and also a disturbing kind of time, but that joy that Kate talks about is underneath that. And so I feel that we can celebrate even though we weave in through these difficult times. So that's my offering to the hoop. Thank you. I want to respond to that. I'm going to need to leave soon too. Um, I came here hoping to laugh and sing and dance with Ia. That's her gifts that I see. And in my traditional ways, we honor each other's gifts by asking for them. And I love her elder teachings. I love hearing all of you speak and share in these beautiful ways. But I want to ask Ia to laugh and sing and dance with me by the fire on Sunday, if you can. I'll put the link in the chat for everyone to join with the fire on Sunday. And um, hope to see you all. Love being here with you and love sharing in this way. And I guess I got five more minutes. I'll hang out for that. Thank you all so much. Oh, Sherman. Hello to Sherry and Auntie Katie. <laughs> Love you very much because, you know, it's just the very simple fact that, you know, we come from joy. We come from a moment of ecstasy, orgasm, absolute, just amazing joy. And why is not this world walking in joy when we've been birthed in joy, given life in joy? A young brother of mine in the men's circle told us men, us men, we got to really do some more joy around here. Can't let all the women have it. And he said, joy, J-O-Y, just over yourself. Hello. <laughs> and this is what we really need, you know, to really see the essence of how we were birthed, not in this necessarily human form or cocoon, but the absolute essence of the universe that lies within, that beats, breathes, sings, dances with joy in the cosmos. And that's who we are. Absolutely.
I love this beautiful young dancing warrior called Superman. And the Levy's a Lakota. And he has a beautiful YouTube video, short, but he's dancing. And across the screen it says, praying is dancing and dancing is healing. All these beautiful movements are all about healing. And the way we can forgive, we need to really truly become the wholeness of who we've always been, lying within this seed of life that Creator put in us to really blossom and cocoon into our butterfly transformation, into our hummingbird transformation, our dragonfly transformation. All these things I have seen and I have been in the spirit walk. And so it is. Oh. <clears throat> Um, drum. And drum. <laughs> I'm going to pick up that. Oh, did you have a drum? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to pick up, pick up that butterfly wisdom because I was just immediately reminded of um, this place where I am in Australia. Um, <clears throat> I was sitting outside on the first day I got here. And for the first time since 2008, I saw the blue butterflies. And they're, you know, all butterflies are amazing. And there's like this for me, there's just this little spark of something about the blue butterfly because they're, at least the ones I've, I'm seeing, they're really small. And yet they have this electric spark. And in the hoop of evolving elders, when we get together weekly, um, we'll be looking at that. Um, we What was coming up was this, this, this whole piece around butterfly wisdom, this wisdom of the willingness and the time of, of, of coming out, you know, of the liminal space of the, of that space of, uh, out of that cocoon and, and really being the vibrational frequency of that spark that we're carrying. And I love where this is going because it's speaking to that spark in me, that, that reminder to open my wings, to sing my song, in fact, when I, when I sat with this poem and when it just recently came, it was like, oh my God, this thing is so big. Like, <laughs> it was like, and then, and I just held it on me and I held it on me and I held it on me and I don't necessarily wear it out depending on where I'm going. Probably pretty much don't. But what it was speaking was about the heart song, about the, what is the song of our hearts? Because when I hear, you know, what, what are you, um, what are you off? What are you bringing? What what offering is coming through you? You know, which is really the essence of this circle. I think of that heart song. You know, I think of 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 being here and 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 the song line of the heart. Like, what is that? When we're thinking of song lines, where you know, when I think of the um, you know, the original people here, they're listening to the and anywhere they're listening to the land speak its song. And reflecting that or speaking or connecting with the water and, and singing that song through our inner waters. Like, I just feel like that's what's burgeoning, you know, as the, as the butterfly wisdom, as the grandmothers are being called forth, you know, as that balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, right? Two wings of the butterfly moving together. So I'm just really grateful, really grateful for this gift here this morning, five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and the rooster is crowing and the kookaburras are about to go off. And I'll end with that. If you have never listened to a kookaburra sing its song in the morning, you definitely want to because 
at about 5.20, so we should be hearing it pretty soon. Um, I don't know if I put on my original song, but my original, uh, click that button, whatever that button is. But, but in any case, it's so loud. It's so loud and it's free to be in that larger voice. And I'm just saying that for myself. If you take it, that's great. But be willing to be that voice. Um, so with that, I open it into back into the circle and we have a few more minutes to, to be sharing and allowing that energy to continue to sing through you. And if you do want to sing a song, that's up to you. I would, um, no, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I would like to uh, bring in something that I've, I've been reminded of twice in the past week by elders. One was standing bare is that the awareness of the energy around you, the awareness and the voices of the plants, listening to those things takes practice. Like really feeling what's what's going on in the earth around you, really hearing what the birds have to say takes practice. And in some cultures, children are still taught that. Children are still taught to listen and, and to know what's going on. Um, I was I was raised to be outside. I was raised with an awareness and appreciation of nature, but I was not taught that there was a voice to listen to. I was not taught to feel the energies. And as um, an elder in training, I am I am learning those things and appreciating those things. I've uh, just being alive has taught me the necess or the the gift and and the benefits of of being fluent in those languages of understanding those things. But I also feel as an elder in these times because I was not raised in those traditions and, and I was an adult before I ever started listening. It's important for us to, to offer that to the next generation, that awareness, even though I'm not fluent and I'm not expert, if they can be aware, if they can start practicing as children, if we could actually have a generation, uh, an international generation of children that had some awareness, that listened, then the planet, then the species evolves that much, I think a little more quickly and with a little more in, in a more harmonious fashion, because we're not doing this with the different cultures. We're all coming out of the planet. We're all aware of the water that we all need for life of the air and, and everything else that connects us. I'm complete. Shelley's mention of the kookaburra brought up a memory from childhood. There was this song, and you will have to forgive the frog voice. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Joy, your life must be. Now, maybe somebody else knows the true words to the song, but that's what I remember. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Kookaburra, gay, your life must be. That's how I learned it. That's how I learned it too, but my memory is not what it used to be. Um, all this mention of children not learning to listen is bringing up something I am now practicing, which is learning to taste. I think about how little most people, including myself, don't really taste things. So many people put the hot spices on stuff. And so it's like, oh, when it says this herb is bitter, what does that mean? saying this one is mildly bitter. What does that mean? And we're so used to sugar. What does it mean when an herb is sweet? And so I'm in the process of trying to 
expand my knowledge of taste. And hopefully that's something else we can share with people. Because if they learn to taste, then they may not accept some of the stuff that is being sold to us today. Thank you. That. I am so not a singer as well. Um, but when I heard, you know, what is our heart song? And uh, what are we, what are we here for? I heard the song in my head and I, I sing here at home privately all the time, but publicly I always pass. But everybody, this last week, every circle I'm in, everybody's been so brave. Spirit keeps telling me like, be brave, be brave. So there's a song, and I'm just going to sing the chorus that repeats, but it's Buffy, um, St. Marie's song, and it's circling. We are circling is what it's called. And it's uh, the chorus is, we are circling, circling together. We are singing, singing a heart song. We are family. We are unity. We are celebration. We are sacred. So that one kept coming through. And I'm thinking if I don't put this out today, it's going to stay with me all day. So that, that's the heart song. Um, and I, that's been coming up a lot. So that's the gift today. Thank you. I love the hot songs, uh, and my one that um, when I came to live in St. Croix, you know how people look at you in certain um, situations, and we went to the museum, and so this group of uh, well-thought people, they wanted me to come on and be one of the storytellers on the Founders Day for St. Croix. Well, I'm new to St. Croix. It seemed kind of like, all right, I'm going to be the storyteller on the platform for Farmer's Day in St. Croix. Where are the historians here? The storytellers. So I meet my first storytellers, Miss Dosh, Miss Deutsch, who lived to be a hundred and something. And then another one, Miss Oliveira. These were the founders of teachers, founding teachers here in St. Croix in the diaspora early part of African people's southern year. And so Miss Dorsch, I'm sitting on the platform with Miss Dorsch and Miss Oliver. So I have to yield, because I can't tell their story. Only they can tell their story. So I had to qualify, even though we have the same shade of skin, we all black people and our, our descendants of African people, I still can't tell their story. I can tell my story. So I had to like yield because they were my elders. And I'm like, no, no, no. I can, I know better than to step over these elders. So, and so they, they, they brought, they recognized me and they welcomed me to the platform and gave me permission to do my story, but I still yield. And my stories came more familiar stories that I would share with children. And so this one story is, I love the heart song. And I tell all of that to get to the heart song. And the children remembered me as a result of the heart song. And they were like, they would meet me, go down the road or streets and stuff. You the lady that sung that song. So I'm going to do this song for you guys. And I want you guys to sort of do the same thing the children do. You're going to put your hand on your heart and you're going to listen to your heart. And you're going to listen, 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 listen to my heart song. Listen, 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 listen to my heart song. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. Listen, 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 listen to my heart's song. Listen, 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 
Listen to my heart song. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to my heart song. Now you're going to listen to your heart song. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to your heart song. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to your heart song. Same thing. You're telling your heart. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to my heart song. The song comes from the Supi um, teachers and practice. I heard it over 30 years ago in a sacred circle. It's a wonderful song. Thank you. I'm so inspired by all you singers and who say you're not singers, but singing, <laughs> Claudia and Bill. And that's one of my places I need to practice, practice more. As Alda said, we have to practice. Um, I had a teacher many years ago uh, who was a Basque uh, elder, um, Angelise Ari, and then she used to go around the directions of the medicine wheel and say, when did you stop singing? When did you stop dancing? When did you stop telling your story? And when did you stop sitting in silence? And you know, there's a balance to being able to doing all of those, to be silent, to sing out, to be dancing. And, and so at the beginning of the new year, I made a commitment to dance for at least 10 minutes every day. And my cat watches me and, and he seems to love it. And, you know, that was one of my gifts of my life was dancing. But then I went through physical things and a surgery and I kind of backed off of it. And now I want to reclaim it dancing and I know when I dance then it allows me to let my voice come to so these are such strong medicines um, and finding the balance of really being able to uh, to be with all of them <laughs> and and I think that is part of the elders is when to tell our story when to be quiet <laughs> when when to, when to bring the harmony and the song and the vibration to a circle and when to just get everybody dancing and <laughs> out of our heads. So that's reminding, you're all reminding me of that teaching. And thank you, thank you. And I didn't name, I realized I got so excited last time I spoke to say, hey, I'm here in Sedona, Arizona, the land of the Yavapai and the Apache people and the Sinagua and, uh, the land is speaking to me very, very strongly here now. And I am doing my best to get out and listen. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. Sweet, powerful circle. I feel honored to be part of. <clears throat> so you can see our circle is enfolding and some are moving out and it feels like the perfect time to just honor the space, really honor all the ancestors that have been here, honor the songs that have moved through the water, the womb, the wisdom of the womb waters and this returning to the fire within. I realized like that's how this whole thing began. And when we're talking about everything that's been shared, it's, it's like we're folding in all this wisdom we're folding in to the center um, and a building of that capacity to be present. And, and as we see like the field, the energy itself, like uplifts, always uplifts us, right? When we allow that movement of the heart and what wants to come through. And even what, if what wants to come through is, 
is I'm being challenged. I'm, I'm, you know, what's present for me is this challenge and, and just to allow the energy to move because from, you know, when we talk about transmutation, this is what we're talking about is that the, at least in my world, like the field understands, creator understands, creation understands and knows how to integrate these energies. And it's, and that's another thing that happens in that, this type of a circle, like that, that resonant field integrates and uplifts and transmutes and we can feel it, which brings on the song naturally, organically, right? It's, it's amazing to me. So I just um, wanna, and just in regards for this, you know, the hoop of elders for anybody who's listening um, on the replay and you know that uh, <laughs> forgive the unforgivable. So forgive that there was a big mess up here in terms of time today, people didn't get on, people wanted to get, you know, um, computer and just to understand that we're, we're all in this evolution of uh, becoming more gentle and walking more tenderly on the earth. And so that's the invitation as we leave here today, just to continue that and, and we will get it straightened out. And please make sure, I believe everybody here, but if anyone's listening to this, if we don't have your email, please, um, uh, you can find me on Facebook and let me know that you want to be part of that email that goes out that is is clear <laughs> and has the right information to show up here and and really expand this uh, beautiful circle. So um, with that, uh, we're just going to close uh, gently. I'll just invite us to just take a moment of silence and just becoming again connected, aware and present with your breath. really honoring and gratitude this time together, the songs, the words, the vibrations for love, the ecstasy. And we thank all those seen and unseen spirit helpers that have been with us today. Nature spirits, elementals, all the directions. Thank you for being with us. Creator, creatress. And so we can just end in a vibrational frequency of yum, which is just something that feels so good. Just inviting this, you can unmute yourself and we'll just go out with a yum. So yum. Mm -hmm. Yum. 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 Bye. You're all beautiful. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.